Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St Mark's Gospel, verses 30 to 34. It's the Gospel for the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Year B. St Mark writes, The Apostles gathered round Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. That's from Mark chapter 6 verses 30 to 34. What does it suggest to us? Well, the Christian knows that Jesus Christ is the supreme revealer and teacher of God and his plan, and also of the moral law. He is also the supreme embodiment and exemplar of it. There are disagreements as to exactly what our Lord taught in certain respects, but if a person were not to consider Christ as the ultimate and sure teacher of religion and morality, that person would not be counted as a Christian. This is because, by implication, he would not accept that Christ is God. Does this mean that the mere fact that Christ who is divine taught that something should be done of itself gives to that action its moral goodness? Alternatively, does the mere fact that Christ condemns something as morally reprehensible give to that action its evil character? No, it does not. By his teaching, Christ reveals the goodness or evil of an action, but his teaching does not of itself make of the action something good or evil, as the case may be. That action has its own objective moral value, which Christ by his teaching reveals. The same is to be said of Christ's actions. The fact that Christ acted and lived as he did does not of itself make such actions and way of life good or evil. What I mean by saying this is that the truth which Christ revealed and lived is not the product of what we might call his arbitrary choice. Or putting it more specifically, let us imagine someone absurdly claiming that Christ taught that some immoral action, say theft or lying or even murder in, some, in certain circumstances, is objectively moral after all. Would this make that action moral? No. If in the impossible case of this being proved to be true, it would only discredit the Christian claim. It would not make the immoral action moral. God wills the truth and only the truth, but his will does not arbitrarily create the truth. He cannot, by his mere decision, make morally right what is morally wrong, just as he cannot, by his mere declaration, make true what is in fact false. Rather, God is utterly subject to the truth, and his infinite goodness flows from this. This is an important point because it is possible for a religious faith to be distorted and for the teachings of that faith to be looked on as the very source of the morality of human acts. It can be thought that if the founder of the religion says that something is good when it is obviously not good, then the mere declaration of either that founder or the body which represents his teachings makes it good. This is faith going radically against right reason and such cannot be regarded as characteristic of anything divine. No external declaration of itself makes an action good or evil. It only reveals its goodness or evil as the case may be. What then are the sources of the morality of human acts? The morality of human acts depends on three sources. The object which is chosen in the act, the intention of the one so acting, and finally, the circumstances of the action, which include its consequences. 
an act is morally good when it involves simultaneously the goodness of these three components. If what is actually done is itself objectively evil, say, the killing of the unborn, even if the intention is good, say, to preserve the mother from difficulty, the action remains evil. Alternatively, even if what is done, say an act of kindness, is objectively good, an evil intention, say, to gain some personal and even unjust advantage, corrupts that action. On the other hand, a good intention can never justify evil means to achieve it. Furthermore, while circumstances can increase or diminish the responsibility of the one who is acting, they cannot change the moral quality of the acts themselves. They never make good an act which is itself evil. In fact, there are some acts which, in and of themselves, are always morally wrong because of their object. For example, blasphemy, homicide, adultery, and even suicide. They can never be justified by appealing to some good effects which may possibly result from them. While controversy and disagreement in society over moral issues can make it difficult to be sure of what is moral, we have an ultimate and sure teacher. Christ is the teacher of mankind. In our Gospel today, our Lord, we read, landed and saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Christ is the teacher of mankind, and the exemplar of all that is true and good. He is the exemplar of what he taught. His revelation he has entrusted to the church he founded on the apostles with Peter at their head, and he endowed his church with the divine spirit to guide her in all her teaching. Let us look to Christ, who abides in his body, the church, to know the way that leads to goodness and to heaven.